Now, with all the recent focus on Syria and now obviously with the tragedy today with the mass shootings, I'm telling you, in Washington, there is a crisis that's blowing that has been uh, certain totally flying underneath the radar. But we're going to talk about it now with the latest reason to be concerned. It's about government shutdowns, defaults. And Andrew, this sounds familiar. Uh, Twelve months ago, I heard the words of never again. Well, we're here again. Well, and we've been trying to ring the alarm bell on this for, for weeks now, Rich. It's become habit in D.C. to have these debates at the last minute, and usually without enough time to get them done right. And this month, no exception. A looming government shutdown coming at the end of this month, unless lawmakers can work out a new budget deal. And with Congress in recess next week, that's in red, that leaves four and a half days to get something done. And then, because one good crisis deserves another, come the middle of October, less than a month from now, the government default happens unless lawmakers can work out a debt limit extension. It's a scenario we've seen several times since Republicans became the majority in the House after the 2010 elections, but now dozens of Republicans in both chambers have a new twist. They want spending cuts and a repeal of Obamacare in exchange for passing these things. President Obama says no, and he's taken to the airwaves to smack back at Republicans who are yelling for a shutdown. Never in history have we used just making sure that the U.S. government is paying its bills as a lever to radically cut the government at the kind of scale that they're talking about. It's never happened before. The president even describing those Republicans the same way a parent might describe a petulant child. And when it comes to budgets, we've never had a situation in which a party said that, uh, you know, unless we get our way 100 percent, then uh, we're going to let the United States default. That's never happened, George. And today, even with the chaos of the D.C. shooting happening nearby, the president essentially accused the GOP of not caring about the economy. Uh, at the moment, Republicans in Congress don't seem to be focused on how to grow the economy and build the middle class. And I think we can expect that language to get even more hyperbolic from the president in the days to come. Now, he made it clear, Andrew, he also said he's not going to negotiate, right? Right. Okay. But the cynic in me says, well, I believe him, if you're a Republican right now, you say, all right, let me see. On Syria, you know, he said he was going to do one thing, but he didn't do the other thing. Um, this guy's all bark, no bite. Uh, that's a real fear here for the administration that the GOP isn't taking the threat seriously. I, I think that is a legitimate fear. I think the Republicans would be wise to be cautious on this front because the difference between Syria and this are the numbers are backing the president. And uh, all the numbers say that... The, the president has the more support from the American people. And if this thing goes to shutdown or goes to debt limit, people are going to side with the president and blame Republicans. And remember, Andrew, last year you had all of Wall Street, every uh, CEO of all the big banks here. You had every economist that came out. You had everybody saying, what are you people doing? It's you not can't even, default. This is stupid. It's going to hurt the economy. It's not even the full Republican group in Washington. It is mostly the Tea Party, the, the 70 some odd members in the House and about a dozen to a dozen and a half members in the Senate who are opposed to this. Most leadership from the Republican standpoint does not want a government shutdown, does not want a, a debt limit default. Jeannie, what's your gut? Who, who blinks first here? Well, the president is not going to blink, and I will tell you why. Not only, it's not because the numbers are on his side, which is true, they are, and it's like 42 members of the House that, that are holding this Obamacare. Yep. It's because of this. The best thing that could happen to the president is a government shutdown. The Republicans get blamed, and he has a chance to take mm -hmm. Congress in 2014, which is the only way he stops what is looking like a terrible, terrible year for him and he's able to get any part of his agenda done before he leaves. He is looking like such a lame duck. The, the, the piece you showed from George Stephanopoulos end with George Stephanopoulos asking him about Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden in 2016. And the president said, oh, that's I just got elected. That's just, <laughs> No, it's not. It's not too early. Yeah. That's what people are talking about because everything he said he was going to do this year, not one thing is going to get done from immigration to gun control. His best bet is a government shutdown. He has a chance when the Republicans are blamed to take, you know, the House mm -hmm. or to at least increase his numbers and he can get some of his agenda passed because he is going to have a rough time until 2016 if that doesn't happen. You know, Dom, I get tired sometimes, even though it's legitimate of supporters of the president to say, well, look at the Congress he's got to deal with. And That's like it's exactly like what I, was about I to know, say. <laughs> but you know what? In this particular case, um, really nobody's had to, the idea that it went through Congress, I'm talking about Obamacare, um, it, it got voted. 
The Supreme Court basically gave it uh, the seal of approval here. And after all that, they're going to say, well, no, you know what? Yes, we ran up the bills already. And yes, we're going to be in default. And yes, we have just last year as proof positive that this doesn't do anything except hurt our bond rating, et cetera, if we go down this road. We know all that. But you know what? Unless you take what was already voted on, passed and approved and ratified, unless you take it off the table and defund your own signature program, we're going to let the country go up in flames. You got to feel a little bit for him. I don't give him a complete pass on this, but on this one, Come on. No, you've got, I'm sorry to interrupt, you've got to no, feel for John Boehner. The only, the only people that are going to be hurt by that are the Republican leadership who, as Andrew pointed out, don't want this to, de don't want to go into a, well, de don't want to go into a shutdown. He needs to be willing to lose his job yeah, that, You're right, but Until who wants he does to do that? that? I, I'm sorry. I feel bad. No, no, because no, no, the no. president wants the shutdown. No, I, I couldn't say it better, so oh, I, I defer to my colleague <laughs> and Ray. Uh, I couldn't have said it better. Uh, I, I really feel, you know, it's funny. Uh, I was looking at Dave Dinkins, former mayor of New York book, uh, just this morning, in which he's, I know you guys are going to look at the clock and go, it's 6.50, uh, <laughs> he's finally, he's bringing up race. <laughs> when we look back at this, I mean, I know that we can't look, look at it through the prism of, of, of race all the time, but when you look back at this, this is the first black president. Why do they want to defeat him so badly? Why do Republicans want to defeat this president so badly? I ask you, Mr. Richard. I, I, I don't, I think part of it might be the color thing, but I think another part of it is they read this guy as soft. And they read him, no, that, look, I'll give you a better one. They read this no, guy no. You know is why? extremely popular with the American no, people. No, but you know why? And the Time only out. way they can take him down in places like Indiana and Dominic, so on it's not, you is know why? legislatively. You know why I don't agree? Look what happened with Larry Summers. Now, whether we, the four of us, like him, mm -hmm. don't like mm -hmm. him, is not the point. This is a government, this is a presidential appointee. His own party submarine this. What other president you know, if he wants this guy to be his Fed chair, couldn't get it through his own party? Do you know the? You know what would happen if they tried this with LBJ or they tried this with a bunch of other Democrats? He would make life miserable for his party. And whether you hate or like Summers is not the I point. Agree with you on he that. lets himself get rolled. No, he, well, I agree. I he agree got, with you on that. He got rolled on that. that, but that was because he put the, got the guy's name out there months ago and let it sit. He let them attack him. My he point, he is to, to blame no, for that. He no is one else. to blame. I right. agree. He didn't come to, I mean, I'm no fan of Larry Summers at all. I think I'm good riddance. The president's better off without him. That said, what president, LBJ wouldn't put somebody's name out there, let him sit all summer, let him be attacked. There were people in the, in the Senate who said they didn't get calls from the administration until yesterday on this on this nomination. That's crazy. Yeah. You have, you know, you have not done your job in that case, and he let that happen. Hey, Andrew, uh, I know we've got to go break at least, but it's not just partisan politics, this debt limit fight, and then what happens after. There, I, I, Real quick here, there's real consequences, and this isn't opining. We know this for a fact. Well, yeah, we, we had the debt limit thing already happen before. There's, uh, I came up with four impacts that it's going to have. The first is the stock market. Your 401k is going to go in the tank because the, the stock market is, even before you get to the debt limit, the markets will sell off reacting to the possibility of it. Then money just becomes more expensive because the credit rating, it dropped last time. Before we even got to the debt limit, it dropped because we knew that there wasn't a deal coming. That means fewer loans available for you at home because if it's more expensive for the banks, it's going to be more expensive for you and you're not going to get it unless you have a good credit. And then this one is, might be the scariest possibility, which is the rise of the yuan. If the dollar loses its value, where are people in the rest of the world going to go? The, how about the people we owe all the money to? That would be the Chinese. And also, what's the message? You ran up the bill already. This is America. There's full faith and credit, these basic things. You, you, you spend the money, you got to pay it back. What is the message they're trying to send? So Tea I'm with party you. nuts. But I'm with Tea you, Jeannie. Party nuts. It's like, what's the one thing they could do to screw up their party's chances? Oh, I know. Let's shut the government <laughs> down. It's like but it's they not, try to do it themselves. It's almost a point of pride. It's almost we will burn this village down in order to save it. But nobody wants the village to I burn down. I wonder why. Yeah. I wonder why. Because they're idiots. All right, we're going to take a break. <laughs> and we come back, we'll wrap things up. Stay with us.